Well, welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John DeTulio. And I'm Melissa Bromley. For over four decades, the men's and women's hockey teams have called the Frank Ritter Memorial Ice Arena their home. On March 1st, both teams played their final games at the cramped but beloved 2100 seat venue. And while it was an emotional farewell, we discovered the Ritter won't soon be forgotten. And the Tigers are going to send the Frank Ritter Arena out in style. Three to one. RIT wins here in the regular season finale. It's the when you look at it when it's empty, there's really not much to the to the arena you know it's brick walls it's small uh, wood benches it's the people that are in the arena that make that make the atmosphere that uh, kind of have that lure to, to Ritter Arena. It's, it is a great place recruits come here people from the community come here first-time fans they, they can't believe how wonderful it is and you know they get hooked they, 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 they come back and they become part of this whole you know tiger spirit that we have. It's really my favorite place to watch athletics. I mean, it's a fantastic home field advantage for our hockey teams, and if the crowd goes crazy. You know, it's been a wonderful, wonderful story of RIT hockey from the early days in D3 to these wonderful days we're having in Division I. Let's go! Let's go! It's, it's electric when we uh, step on the ice for games, and it's, uh, it's a special feeling. No other rings compare to the Ritter. When we're on away trips, we can't wait to get back home and have our home fans here and just playing in the Ritter. It's pretty compact, which is awesome, I think, for uh, women's hockey because we get a lot of fans. It's just, you know, we always have a pet band, and so I think a, a lot of the thing is the, the atmosphere, though. It's just so great. Ritter's been our baby uh, over the past uh, 40 years, but uh, particularly over the past, um, you know, 30 years, where we have we've really grown our hockey programs. It's been like our nest here. Honestly, for me, I don't think it's set in just yet. You know, you get so focused on the season, and uh, you try not to think about it or get distracted by it. But thinking now that you're, you know, a couple games away from actually never playing a game in here again. Um, it's kind of hitting home now. My favorite memory, probably cliche now, but it's got to be the national championship. Um, both years, actually, even though we did lose the first year, it was a big learning experience for our team. So we were able to take what we learned through the loss and put that into next season and, and win it the one year. The crowd when we went off to the Frozen Four that was in the rink to send us off was, that was a different, you know, not playing the game, but just a different experience to see that many people out in the crowd and uh, sending us off I thought was also special but um, there's just a lot of games uh, some of them are heartbreaking games that you lose at the end and and obviously I remember the wins that you win a little bit better I'd like to think so but uh, yeah so many great memories and, and I think the fans were every bit a part of it. I guess it's a little bit different for me because this will definitely like it's kind of going to be my last game for sure at Ritter and it's going to be one of my last college games so It'll be weird. It'll be really weird to know that we're the team that kind of finished off a legacy almost and finished off what RIT has known for hockey for so long. It's given us as the team a lot. Um, it's given me personally a lot. And, uh, you know, all I can hope is that we send it out or send Ritter out and, uh, with, with a bang and make sure that, uh, you know, we show it the respect that it deserves. We get to move into something, you know, that's going to be amazing, but, you know, we're also moving on from something that has brought a lot to, I think, every player on this team and anyone that's gone through this rink. We don't say goodbye to Ritter, we say farewell. Farewell, old friend. I'm going to miss the intimacy of the building, the small building, the loud building. My hope is, though, when we go into the Palestini Center, we're going to take that loudness and that, that smallness, which makes it difficult on the other teams, over there with us, but that's what it's going to be. I think it's going to be the, the smallness and the intimacy of the, of the old barn. If we can recreate uh, some of what we have, the, the magic, I guess, of, of Ritter 
in the new facility, then it's a, it's a home run. But uh, we're going to miss Ritter, but we're also looking forward to uh, going into a new facility. RIT hockey won't be Ritter's primary tenant anymore, but the building will remain open right here on campus. The Tiger hockey programs will move into the 4,200-seat Gene Polisini Center next fall. Well, still to come on this edition of Sports Zone, the longest game in RIT women's hockey history leads to a Division I first for the Tigers. Plus, in lacrosse, RIT completes a miraculous comeback to topple the nation's top team. Highlights are ahead. You're watching RIT Sports Zone. Welcome back to Sports Zone. After earning a sweep of their first round playoff series with Penn State, the RIT women's hockey team moved to the CHA semifinals to face nationally ranked Robert Morris. RIT 1-3 against the Colonials this season. After a scoreless first, Melissa Bromley got the Tigers on the board in the second with her third goal in her last four games. It was 1-0 RIT. Later in the period, RIT added another as Carly Peril scores to put the Tigers up 2 zip. It was 2-1 in the third with RIT put it away. Courtney Kunachika nets her 10th goal of the year. RIT would add another as they cruise to a 4-1 victory over 10th rank, Robert Morris. It's a big step for us and actually it was one of our goals, kind of the final goal of the uh, kind of our game plan was, you know, we were here last year in this very game and uh, you know lost in overtime and it's a tough defeat and the um we thought you know like let's we're ready to make the next step so let's go out and have some fun win the game and uh be ready to play for a championship and that's that was the goal from the start of the season and uh you know now we have a shot all right to advance to the cha championship game against defending conference champion and eighth ranked Mercyhurst. What an outing for junior goaltender Allie Bennington. In the first period, she stopped all 13 shots she faced as the Tigers and Lakers remain scoreless. Second period action, final minute of play. Tigers on the power play. Aaron Zach through two defenders, somehow gets it to go. RIT took a one nothing lead. The Tigers and Lakers remain tied through regulation, so we go to overtime. In the extra session, Allie Bennington was the star of the day. She stopped 62 of the Lakers, 63 shots. We go to double overtime with just over six minutes remaining. Lindsey Griggs shot gets through for the game winner. RIT stuns Mercier's 2-1 to to win the CHA championship. With more from Erie, Pennsylvania, here's Sports Zone's Taylor Beatty. In just their second season at the Division I level, the RIT Tigers women's hockey team made a major statement in capturing their first CHA championship. The Tigers knocked off 11-time champion Mercyhurst behind Allie Bennington's 62 save performance. What were you feeling when Lindsay put that one home at the end? Um, it was shot. Like we were sitting there, we had a great angle on the on the shot, and you actually like saw it go in and out. And we're like, and me and uh, Matt Woodard look at each other, and we're like, "Are you kidding? Did that just go in?" And then we turn around, and Siobhan is jumping on us, and uh, you know we're like, and then the girls were gone. You know, they're like all of a sudden full of life and right off the bench, and um, amazing feeling. Honestly, like I had nothing to describe the feeling. Um, I shot the puck and like. I didn't even process it that went in and then all of a sudden all the players were coming on the ice and I mean the feeling is indescribable and I mean Allie on the on the back end kept us in this game the whole time so I mean she's the one to thank right now because she played amazing and played her heart out. We've talked about it before but what more can you say about Allie Bennington's play? Nothing like it she proves it yet again that in the biggest moments when the, the biggest spotlight is on her she gets it done and uh, she gives you a chance to win any game that she plays in. 62 saves tonight. What, what, was, what got into you? You played out of your mind. I don't know. I wasn't really looking at the shot count, you know, just focusing on the next shot the whole game and don't try not to look up there and try not to think about how tired you are. Just try to keep moving forward. And I'm just happy that Lindsay ended it when she did. <laughs> I think, you know, Binner stands on her head. She is a huge part of this team. She's the backbone of this team. And 
you know, when we know that, and, you know, she she kept us in this game, you know, but, you know, we all worked hard, and, you know, it's that's the great thing about our team is that we're such a team, we're so co cohesive, and, you know, we work until, until we get the result we want. You guys killed off a ton of penalties throughout the game, and your special teams were just unbelievable. What can you say about that effort? Yeah, I can't say enough about the special teams effort. You know, um, a lot of the, you know, you got Celeste and Courtney and Marissa and Aaron, who are probably our top two pairs for penalty killing, and they absolutely crushed it the entire night and did everything they needed to do. And, you know, even the team as a whole, we were blocking shots, we were getting in lanes, and doing what we needed to do to get the win. I think they were a huge part of the game, and I think. Um, Everyone was sacrificing their bodies and blocking shots, and I think that's what really helped us out in the end. I mean, probably a bunch of us are going to go home with bruises and having to put ice on them, but it was all worth it. And I thought we did just, we battled through everything, and we, we told the girls, those bruises will heal up in no time, you know? That, that trophy will last forever. Just your second season at D1, what does it mean to the program to bring home a CHA championship? Uh, it's huge, and it goes on the girls about kind of our, our year with being such a young team and learning how to play with each other early in the year and we've certainly had our ups and downs early on and uh, the way the team came together down the stretch um, started gelling with each other and then kind of having our seniors and juniors really take charge and and just lead our team right to the right to the final buzzer was unbelievable second year in division one and we already take a championship i mean it just the future looks bright and i can't wait for what's to come next i think tons of people have doubted us and if you look back uh just last year we played mercyhurst in our first game and i think it was seven two they had two quick goals and you know just to see the progress that we've made over two years it's it's literally unbelievable and it's it's great you guys are returning a bunch of key players next year but how hard is it going to be losing those three seniors yeah, it's going to be tough. I mean, they were a huge part of our team, and they contributed so much, so it's really tough to lose them. But, I mean, they played so well, and I think they should be proud of how they did. They accomplished everything imaginable to accomplish. And, you know, they've left a legacy. They've left their mark. That's what they needed to do. Um, and there's, they're not coming back, so you're going to have to find a way to win without them. Oh, next year we're, we're coming back. We're coming back to win it again, that's for sure. Um, you know, we get to go further hopefully after next year, so that's the plan. We start there, CHA champions, and then go on. Meanwhile, the RAT men's hockey team entered the Atlantic Hockey Association playoffs as the ninth seed, so the Tigers had to travel to Holy Cross for a best of three first round series with the Crusaders. Tigers were eliminated two games to one as Holy Cross rallied from two goals down in game three to defeat the Tigers in overtime. RIT finishes the year with a record of 12-20 and five. Welcome back to Sports Zone. Last spring, the RIT men's lacrosse team reached the Division III National Championship game for the first time in school history. But a disappointing 16-14 loss to Stevenson sent the Tigers home without the top prize. Well, what better way to begin the 2014 season than with a rematch of last year's title game? Number one, Stevenson facing number two, RIT at the Carry Dome in Syracuse. We pick things up in the fourth, RIT trailing by four with under two minutes to play when transfer Casey Jackson nets his second of the day with 14 to 11 Mustangs. Just 33 seconds later, the Tigers on the attack again and it's Jackson who scores again to pull RIT within two with just 57 seconds remaining. RIT kept coming at Stevenson under 30 seconds ago. Alistair Warren scores his first of the year to bring RIT back within one. Final seconds of regulation, RIT on the man up and Casey Jackson scores his fourth goal today as time expires to tie things up at 14 and send us to overtime. In OT, RIT with the man advantage again. Taylor Wisman with the open look and he buries it as RIT rallies from six goals down in the fourth to knock off number one Stevenson 15 to 14. With more on RIT's thrilling comeback victory, here's Sports Zone's Emily Clark. RIT scored four goals in the final minute and 30 seconds of the game to tie at 14. And Taylor Wisman scored the game winning goal to give RIT an unlikely win over number one ranked Stevenson. Wisman, 
So down four goals with about a minute 30 left. What was going through your head? It's a lot of goals to make up in this short period of time, and you never quit. We never give up. Uh, but at that point, it's it's uh, it's tough to think we're going to come back and win that game. But um, I'm proud of the guys. Being down four goals with I think they said a minute 37 left. Like we didn't. We thought we could do it, but we didn't know it could actually happen. And yeah, four goals in a minute 37 is ridiculous, and no one expected that to happen. Scoring the game tire in that final second, what was going through your head? Oh, I knew the time was running down. I didn't expect it to be like 0 0.2 seconds or whatever it was, but uh, I just had the time in room and uh, I knew the clock was running down, so I had to let it go. So it was, uh, it was pretty nice to see that ball go in. Now Stevenson definitely kept you guys on your toes for quite a while there. Do you think it was nerves or can you attribute that to something different? You know, beginning of the season, guys are getting into it, and uh, I think we were holding our sticks tight. We practiced for so long that, uh, you know, we were just antsy to get into a game. But uh, once the second half started, you know, guys started to settle down, actually play their game, and, and the veterans and stuff started to actually come through, and it, it, was, uh, it was a good effort by those guys. Maybe it was nerves, maybe it wasn't. You know, a lot of it's, you know, credited to them. You know, their defense is a high-pressure defense. They're, uh, they're very good. I mean, very athletic, very rangy. Uh, they bat down passes very well. So uh, I don't really know. Uh, hopefully we can, we can sort it all out and, and uh, play a little bit cleaner next week. We definitely seem to have nerves in the first half. We don't know why because we've played them before. We've been in a big stadium, so we don't know what the real reason was. We have to work on that. But then, yeah, second half, we somehow got over that and just kept going. I don't know. I thought we prepared all week for them. You know, we had a lot of good practices. We got to practice in here a couple nights ago, get used to the environment. So I'm not quite sure what it was. We couldn't really get going at the beginning, but they're, they're a really good team. You know, they won the championship last year. They came in ranked number one. Uh, it, there's no question that they're a very good team. They pressure us a lot, but, um, you know, all credit to them. They, they played a really good game. We just were able to come out with the winning game. How does it feel to be the new number one team in the country? I mean, it just means we have to work hard because everybody's going to be aiming for us. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 a nice, uh, it's a nice title, but that's all it is. It's just a title. So. How does this gauge where you guys are hopefully going to head for the rest of the season? Um, I mean, we're going to celebrate tonight, but we're not looking past thinking, you know, hiring a horse or anything like that. You know, we, we know that there's uh, good, good teams out there, and, uh, you know, we just got to come every night and beat them, and we're not going to overlook anyone. You know, we're a hard-working team, blue-collar team, so um, we're going to take it in stride and, and uh, play those teams. I don't know if there's a gauge there. I mean, you know, we're comfortable uh, in our ability. We, we know we've got a good group. It's just, uh, you know, we've got to be hungry for every single contest. You know, that's going to be the key. I mean, can, can you get over this and, and regroup and come back next week and, and, and play again? Every game going down the line is a huge game, and it, it's a ladder. Coach McKee talks about, you know, every game is a rung on the ladder, and obviously the end of the ladder is the national championship, which we just came up short on last year. So it's the first win. It's exciting, but, you know, it's just, it's just the first win. That's it. Welcome back to Sports Zone. Ashlyn Palmatesso played sparingly her freshman season, averaging just under five points a game. But what a difference a year can make. Palmatesso played in all 26 games this season, finishing second on the team in scoring and fourth in the Liberty League. Sports Zone's Taylor Beatty caught up with this rising hoop star. Last year was your freshman year, and you averaged a little less than five points a game. This year, your sophomore year, you're averaging almost 16. What's been the difference? I think between the two years, accepting my role, last year I had a smaller role on the team, and this year I have a larger role. Um, I worked hard in the off season to improve my shot. I was in the gym every single day for at least two hours. And then last season coming in, I was more focused on, you know, trans transitioning from college, I mean, high school to college. So. I didn't really spend as much time in the gym. So what do you think Ashlyn's role will develop into? I definitely think that Ashlyn is uh, going to be a great captain someday. If not next year, then obviously her senior year. I think that she's going to continue to be a role model for, for younger players. Um, and her work ethic, I think, is contagious. I think you know she's in the gym all the time. Other kids want to be in the gym when she's in here. So um, I just think it's a, a really positive thing. 
Did you expect to be this successful this early in your college career? I knew at the end of my high school year I wasn't, I didn't peak. I kind of leveled out from my freshman year to my senior year of high school. So I knew there was more to come and it was just, you know, how hard I wanted to push myself. And This being only your sophomore year, what do you expect out of yourself for the next two years in college? As an individual, I would like to um, accomplish a thousand point goal. I did that in high school, so it would be awesome if I could do it in college. I actually want to set some records for defensive principles. Everyone knows I can score, but most importantly, it's kind of making your flaws and making them stand out. So I hope to do that. As a team, I would like to live, win um, Liberty League and hopefully make it to NCAAs. Well, don't forget that staying connected to SportsZone is now easier than ever at ratsc.com or by downloading the SportsZone app for your Apple or Android device. Well, that does it for this edition of RIT SportsZone. So until next time, thanks for joining us in the zone.